One of the most popular targets, of course, besides the darkest sky and Milky Way is the moon, which you can also capture in city sky, in urban light polluted skies. Let me clarify this. You know, the moon is never that big. This is due to the use of the telephoto lens. And it's a phenomenon known as moon illusion. It's generated by our brain, especially when the moon is seen with an object on the foreground you, you have this feeling that you have this perception that the moon is much larger than you, Joe. The moon is the same size overhead or on the horizon, is the same size every night. The size of the moon does not change that much. And this uh, popular term supermoon, I would say it's very misleading. And let me explain why. So from the technical point of view, this is very close to my neighborhood just basically 100 yards away on the ocean side. Uh, the moon is rising over uh, these houses in the North Shore of Boston. I have used uh, a 600 millimeter lens plus 2X teleconverter, so it becomes 1200. And then another crop for presentation in the video and post-processing. The term supermoon is only on average 10, 15% larger than a normal moon. You know, for something that is 10, 15% larger, you don't call it super, you know. Super moon, people think this is 10 times larger than a usual moon, not 10%. A typical unexperienced stargazer, this is not even noticed. I mean, it's impossible to notice that. But for a frequent stargazer, you will see that it's a bit brighter. You will see that it's a bit larger, just a bit. Now, how do we capture these images? One is a telephoto. So you uh, have to select anything above 400 millimeter. That gives you the best field of view, 400, 600, 800. Maybe you can approach this with a 200 as well, with a bit of cropping. This is the Boston light, again, with the 600. I use a manual 600 millimeter lens from 40 years ago. The lens is almost as old as myself. And it's still good enough. It's fine. It's sharp. It's a um, prime lens. And I don't need the autofocus. You know, the difference between that 600 and an autofocus new 600 um, by the same company is $5,000. <laughs> and it's not useful to me. I'm not a wildlife photographer. So for night escape photography, we usually use just manual focus. This is with a 200 plus 2x teleconverter from Paris. The moon is setting just before midnight. Uh, you can even see a bit of the craters on the moon, which is impressive with using just a telephoto lens. And this one is again in my neighborhood, very vivid color on that evening. And the lens is 135 plus a bit of cropping. So starting with 200, 135, you get to see more details of the moon. But the main challenge is how to align these, the foreground and the background, which is the moon, in one field of view. As you go with higher focal length numbers, the field of view is smaller. With the 600 millimeter, you only have three degrees. And if you move just 10 meters, it's totally out of alignment. And nowadays, there are three apps that can help you doing this. Photobuilds, Planet, and TPE. TPE was the original one, first introduced. And then came Photobuilds by a dedicated group in Spain. And then came Planet. 